Good okay. evening. Episode, episode number 77 of Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. Um, yes, Bethany and Sparky, how are y'all doing? If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. We've only got a few to answer. You know that we can draw it out, okay, no so problem. We only got like five, should only take like two and a half hours. Yeah, that's thing. it. So if you've got any questions, just put in the comments below and we will get to them. I promise. Okay. Okay. You want to do a long one or short one? No, I got smart. Well, I have I'll to catch you harder now. I have to hold on. No, I'll never get back. I don't know if I'll give it to you. Okay. Oh, All right. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> okay, so this is from Mr. Teddy. Teddy is now 17 months old and barks to get attention or uses his teeth to hang off my ankles or. <sighs> Don't laugh. This is stressful stuff. Or gnaw, gnaws at my hand. He didn't do this when he was younger. How do I break him of this habit once and for all? I've tried treats and commands to get him. Um, but when he wants attention, he's back at it. Is this the? Is this a sign of boredom at home? Oh man. Okay. So. Can of worms. I. I'm gonna try to have my, my filter today, but I feel a very candid response to you, Mr. Teddy. Stop misbehaving, but no, seriously. Um, for, the, for the mom, for the owners who wrote that, 17 months old is a full-blown adolescent dog venturing on adult dog. There is no reason this dog should be behaving that way and getting away with it. However, however, what I mean by that is you need to take stronger measures to stop this behavior. And so if you've been working on a harness, I would suggest investing in a slip leash for the, the times that he tends to get like this. I'm not saying just go for a walk on a slip leash. You have to be trained how to do that. Like it's, it's different. On a harness, they can kind of do whatever they want. You're just using food to try to keep them next to you on a loose leash. A, a slip leash creates, like you need skill. You need to create a skill level in order to do it. Technique. Technique. For me, it's worth it, of course. For us, we think it's worth it. But, but I don't even want to tell you, you know, too much of that. Don't go for a walk on a slip leash. What I'd like you to do is have the dog, only when supervised, and this is a no dog, not like a little baby puppy, just keep that in mind, um, is to have the puppy, dog, drag a slip leash around the house, when supervised only, and then on specific times where you notice some of this behavior. And what you're going to do is, Dusty, come here, hop, Dusty, hop. Oh, not all oh, the way. Wow. Okay. Up, up. Okay. Okay. So if I wanted him to get off of me, say he was being very forceful, obviously I invited him. So I'm going to be more gentle, but if he started nipping me or nipping my ankles or jumped up on me forcefully, I'm going to pick up the leash and do pressure straight up and out and away from me. And I'm going to say no. And so it's going to look like this and see, I'm just holding out and he's not getting off yet. So I'm going to lean into it. Right. And good boy, Dusty. And then I'll continue to hold pressure out and away from me until the dog settles. Let's say that he doesn't settle, that he's still like, wah, wah, wah. okay, that's your dog, by the way, that's Teddy. <laughs> Let's say that he does that. I want you to just move him around a little bit. Just, just with gentle pressure, just enough to keep him out and away from you. Just keep him moving and slowly. And then as he calms down, still your hand, and then relax the leash. And he will go right back for your ankles again as soon as you take a step and you do it again. No, one no is, is fine. And you just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat to calm him down. Then when he's in a calmer state of mind, your food will work. But at 17 months old, we shouldn't be using food to get good behavior. It's so, compromising. We yeah. don't compromise. So I would uh, strongly suggest maybe doing some research on how to wean off of food on, uh, or maybe just get some one-on-one -on -one help on making sure, just to make sure you're using food to reward good behavior, not to get good behavior. Okay. And Ooh, cause like that's that. a, that's a fine line and it's a hard transition for puppy owners to make because you do all this luring and then we add on distractions and we kind of add the luring back in. It's like, well, when is it supposed to go away? And then we get stuck with a pushy adolescent dog. Now, could you, is it, is it possible you're not doing enough exercise? It's possible, but I'll tell you what we see most of the time. What we see is dogs aren't getting enough impulse control work. 
Mental so, exercise. Yeah, because that's what drains them mentally and makes them calmer family dogs. So making sure you're rewarding more for things where the dog backs away, like thresholds, place, moving into them, get out of the kitchen, and then they back up and wait. You know, and then it's if you want to reward that with food, it's very calm. You walk in, piece of food, you walk away, they take up space, you have them move back again. Things like that, even a small dog, it looks small, I think it's a puppy though, a puppy photo, like a 12 week, doodle, looks like, like a 12 week old puppy. Probably 30, 40 pounds at this point maybe. But anyway, that should give you enough to do a head start. Do you have anything to add or you want to move on? No, you took the place one. I think if I were to add place and convert kind of what she said, when would convert, just be adding, is when I'm doing that pressure work, pressure up and out, I would try to actually direct them to place too. So I think place is a really good target, it's a great anchor. So when you put a dog in place, do the pressure up and then release it and they settle, you take a step back, they take a step forward towards you, you can step in, pressure up again, and you're basically just helping them settle by using place, which is a really great anchor and if, target place. If your dog already, what he just said, if your dog already knows place, it takes stress off of the dog. Like what he just said versus what I said, it's less stressful if your dog already knows place. Yeah, and uh, if you don't know place, YouTube. Amazing, a lot of amazing, great videos. Yeah. Look at Bethany's videos. She got a couple on them. Or join her <laughs> Or 200, or 200. Oh, yeah, not, or 17, not, the, um, not 17 months old. Still for the basics. Oh okay. yeah. No, no, stop doing that. Okay. Anyway. Addy, son, kiss. Addison, kiss. I did that. I got it. Dusty. I made it. Dusty. I think Eddie he's sad. Come here. He was sad when you kicked him off. He I gave know. You, he gave you a back look like you invited Dusty. this. I know. I feel bad. Oh, okay. There we go. Right in the gut. That's. that's <laughs> you asked for it, right? I did. This is my this is my elderly border collie, Dusty. Any tips for a six-month-old Labrador who is stubborn? Also, can you post this to TikTok? Well, stubborn, so that's a couple different categories. If we're talking about stubborn, doesn't want to work, doesn't want to train. Uh, what I like to do is I like to build more food drive. One, six months old, two, you can start being a little bit more, um, I don't want to say pushy, but a little bit more firm than you've been before maybe. So less compromise, less of puppy come, and it's more of leash on, puppy come. Leadership. Pressure, step back. Good, you can be more firm. Um, Leadership doesn't mean less guidance and more like heavy handed training. Right down. Leadership means get a leash on your dog every time they're out of crate, every or every time you're home, get a leash on your dog and start teaching them what the rules are in the moment as well as your training session. So if your dog's not allowed on the couch and they get on the couch, don't just yell at them to get off and don't go over and grab the collar. You guide them off over and over again mixed with all your other training. The couch was just an example. I mean, in general, get a leash on your dog and start really guiding them and helping them a lot more. You also need a better source of communication. Dogs that don't take food, um, try taking the meal that you normally feed them. Skip that meal and the meal following that one, use that meal to actually train your dog, build food drive. Six, a six month old dog, he might wait a day. Yeah. My dog waited too. And, and it's not that you're not feeding them, you're offering them food. Keep it simple to start with. Puppy, come, good, handful of food. Puppy, come, good, handful of food. Uh, and if he's like, I'm done, then wait till the next morning, you know, or wait till the next meal. And eventually you'll build up more focus. And I'm gonna give the crowd non favorite, which is if you're giving too much affection, why would your dog wanna work for anything if it's freely mm. given? Boom, Boom, drop the mic. Um, so some trainers will say eliminate affection. I've definitely told clients that in my business as well as here at Puppy Academy. Build drive. However, I don't start with that unless it's very intense. Unless For now, you use dog, food. Yeah, you have a dog disrespecting you as well as being stubborn, you can go a little bit stronger. Yeah, I would say minimize affection. And anytime you do give affection, it's worked for. Mm -hmm. I do a 10 minute training session with food and maybe I'll do a couple little ear scratches at the end, but I'm not having the dog coming up and nudging me with her nose and me being like, okay, okay, I love you too. All That's the time. Not like that. Because then the dog is giving you the command to pet me. <laughs> you became the dog yeah, and they you, became the human. Yes. <gasps> the dog is giving you training commands. So just make sure you're not doing that for anybody out there. Don't get too permissive on that. Dusty's 12 years old, so we're pretty relaxed now, but we didn't used to be because of his, he was young and opportunistic more than usual. We have our eight-year-old pity. We just started giving her affection after three weeks of no affection. Because she, she had 
this is she had a, our dog, yeah. our own dog. Trained. But that's because she they, she hit a back step, and so you she had did. to do that to mm-hmm. to even the playing field. Barking at um, dogs, trying to get dogs' attention by bumping them with their nose, but not in a positive way. So we create different levels of communication by pulling back on affection. It builds leverage. She was so amazing by the end of that three weeks that we slowly trickled in affection after training sessions. And that's because what they had to say started to matter because they weren't giving all of this food or affection so freely, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. I wanted to say something really quick about stubbornness though. This may not be your dog, Addison, but I just want to say I recently came across this rescue dog that was about a year and a half old that's biting people who tries to mess with its collar and stuff and it seemed like such a stubborn dog really like it is it is a stubborn dog okay but why is it stubborn in this particular case and in many cases we see it's a learned stubbornness because I could tell this dog was uncomfortable and it used to live with an elderly owner that had to give it up and this is a new family that owns this young dog now and I'm like okay I'm thinking thinking that every time someone tried to say, hey, go this way, the dog was uncomfortable and was like, I don't want to, and they don't want to make the dog uncomfortable, so they're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, and then they gave in instead of figuring out a way to work through it. That teaches learned stubbornness. If you say sit three times and your dog doesn't sit till the third time, you're teaching learned stubbornness, yeah. And so anyway, my point is just that we get dogs in all the time that even trying to build food drive, even the owners at home doing the meal method that uh, Sparky went over, they're just not that into food. And maybe you could use a toy. We don't love that, but it's it's an option sometimes. Toy builds drive, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, what I would rather you do if your dog just will not build food for leverage, you do the work anyway. Like you, you just do it anyway. And there are so many different techniques to do that. So definitely get creative and um, seek some of that out. But just because you can't build food drive doesn't mean you don't work your dog. We come across that all the time and the dogs still get their training session, whether they feel like taking food or not. I would say if you still struggle with this for another month, you should hire a private dog yeah. trainer to come to your home and see what solutions they can give you. Because even just introducing a training tool with the professional properly can be the world of difference. I go oh, to yeah. clients' houses all the time, won't take food for them. I work with the dog for an hour, a week later I come back, taking food like that. Yeah. Because it stopped being stubborn and it only wasn't taking food because it realized it got better things when it did it. Yeah, yep, exactly. Okay, um, Alin Romeo Alejandre. Nice. Okay, a pug, oh Lord. Four months old, peas, the last three, peas yeah. out. All, all of a sudden, he peed on his bed during the day. He pees outside the last three weeks, all of a sudden oh, yeah. he pees on his bed during yeah. the day. That, that happens. It's a four-month-old pug. They like to, whenever they're uncomfortable and they got to go, they got to go, they got to go, they like to go somewhere where they're comfortable. And a bed, your pillow, your shoe, the bathroom rug that smells like your stinky feet, those are all things that they will target. So he just had to go. You know? uh, I would also get on top of getting him on a schedule though. If oh, you're yeah. basically giving him the freedom to choose when he goes, I get or this to question tell all you, the time. Waiting for your pug to Most tell you. Most dogs will not tell you. If they do, you have a unicorn. Cherish it. And the next dog you get probably will not be a unicorn. Consistency of getting a dog to go potty for you is putting them on a leash and getting them on a schedule. Whether yep. they're in a playpen or a crate, we prefer crate. Whether they're in a playpen or a crate, you basically take them out of the crate put the leash on, take them outside, make them sit at this threshold if they're known to be able to yep. hold it, get them in the area and literally stand there like a tree for two to three minutes in the area you want them to go in. If they go, awesome, reward, good boy, two good potty. Two to three minutes, that's it. Good boy, good potty, bring them in for free time. If they don't go, put them back in the crate. You basically can't get freedom to a dog that's not peeing on command if they're prone to having accidents. Yep. And, that and might be a fluke though. It, I think it is a fluke, but what happens with flukes two times is not a fluke. Three times is a habit. Yay! And this is yep. And this is super common around the five, four, five, six month mark. Yeah. Is we see this all the time with our clients at uh, Puppy Academy, mm-hmm. where they do all this work and the puppy starts doing so good. So they get a little lax, and they're trying to build the amount that the puppy can hold it with, you know. And then they might play a little more and not take the puppy out right away, or the puppy got water in the corner rather than you know 
being given water by hand because it's doing better and it's five months old and they backtrack on pottying. That's so common. So Regression just, is normal, yep. but it means that you gotta go back to your yep. basics. And if you DM us, we'll shoot you a schedule. Yes, DM us. I don't know what- Is it DM, DM? You said DM? Like DM us. us. Yeah, DM us, us. direct message Dog. us, and you'll get a schedule. Okay, it'll be super strict. You can loosen up for a four month old. Uh, no, Nikki, no loosening. it's an hour and a half, isn't it? Okay, you hush up. Nikki says, when, when should you use a digs groove crate training aid? Middle of the day? For meals or phone? bedtime? Google this. What's a digs groove? Digs, digs groove crate. Here, I'll Google it. Why don't you answer that one? Okay. The fact that I'm going to Google it, I'm going to say never. All right. Um, Muffetarian. I did not, I did not say that what right. What did I'm you sorry. say? Muffetarian. Muffetarian. See? Yeah, that's. Oh, hey, hey, everybody. Hey! I'm going to plug this bad boy back in. Okay. I want to say the Opa, but to, people told me I can't say it now. It's insensitive. Because we don't drink, because we're not drinking? Is that why it's insensitive? You're supposed to drink. Opa? Drink. No, that's what they do. That's what they, that's when the... they crush the, oh. the thing. No, I went to a Greek restaurant in Studio City, and they all scream that. Opa is when you crush stuff. Like, you oh. break something. Okay, maybe they're breaking stuff, but then they're also like, hey, and we all drink. The Greek restaurant from Studio City. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Okay. That's, that's, that's my scope of that cultural. <laughs> Thank you for all the tips. <laughs> the Diggs Groove training tool. How I magically kept this on. Oh, it's the freezy thing. It's the freezy thing where you put okay, like, something get, in and just freeze. Get to that. Okay. Thank you for all the tips. How about tips for training a new little Yorkie to not bite? So pretty much everything we've said can go towards that. But a big one too is anytime I'm working with a dog and I get a lot of biting, that's a source of communication. He's literally trying to ask you for something or tell you something, or he's trying to get your attention. Create new channels for communication. So I bring a dog out of the crate. Yes, you should be on a crate on a structure schedule, especially if you have a little, if you have a little, I can't talk today. Okay, no, I, no, no, I, no, 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 finishing the you thought. Gave me the opening. If you have a little Yorkie who is biting, Get them on a structure schedule. That's your first step. He's got to help the brain understand and also help the brain rest when it's not out of when it's not out of the crate. Okay, go. go. Okay, hi. Go. I'm gonna help you. So what I'm <laughs> I'm the one who brain scrambled yeah. today. You gotta step up. <laughs> okay, so what all of you can benefit from. So some of our leash pressure work. It I would do it eventually. Oh, 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 Shh. I would do it eventually with a Yorkie, but but not under six months old. So what you can, so all of you with small breed dogs can really start to do now is really focus on rewarding your puppy backing off. So if you're doing a lot of drive-based training, which is like come for food, turn food, you know, teaching the leash and all that stuff, you know, crate running, crate come, things like that, where there's a lot of movement and they're getting rewarded for that. It can, you know, kind of reward uh, too much of, of the biting. But sometimes we see biting when people aren't doing that at all. And they, the dog needs that to, like he said, harness the energy into movement and focus. So please keep that in mind. That's the first part of this over here. The second part of it, is to make sure you are equally well let's say let's say that all the cum stuff you've been doing that you've been watching those videos and the dog is focusing on you and following you around when, you know when you have food because it's expecting a cum command or turns and all that stuff now you want to make sure that you're transitioning into rewarding more of your dog settling back to receive food place is a great way to do that and even on even on harness you can do some leash pressure work but it's more about stepping into your dog or honestly being on the ground and holding a piece of food and let's let's say bare bones your dog knows nothing You're, you just hold a piece of food and they're like ah, 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 ah. and they might paw at you and maybe you need to be like hey chill out a little with the leash and then just wait your little red fingers with the little big teeth puppy teeth but uh just hold just hold out and the moment your dog, your puppy, not distracted because of a neighbor noise, but the moment your puppy shifts back, go. 
through it, give them a piece of food right away, hold a piece of food again. And then when you combine that with teaching place, and they learn to settle back on place, you reward that good and you're calm. You're not like, yay! So it's good piece of food, good piece of food. And then you start to build your stay. And so anytime you say come from a stay with a puppy, we always say reward them like four to five times for staying before you do the recall, okay? And then if your puppy is so good at recall and biting the, the Jesus out of you, don't even do a lot of recall work for a couple of weeks. Just really reinforce the puppy learning to down or settle back and then receiving food. Then you transition back to food bowl. Then if your puppy went for a walk or played and really, really wants water, is excited about water, you do it with water too because they really want it. So teach them that they have to wait and settle back and then they get to have it. Do it with thresholds. Uh, the front door, block them and keep your feet, you can keep your feet like on the floor and scoot a little bit to block so you don't step on little terrier, little Yorkie feet. But anyway, you still kind of move into them and make them learn to back up and then they get to go for the walk. But if they back up, then they get to come out crate. So let them see an open door and learn to back up and then they get to come forward. So that really needs to be reiterated tremendously. Um, you don't have as much leverage, in my opinion, as I would with a, you know, three, four month old Labrador retriever that I could honestly go ahead and put a slip leash on and do some navigating. And be a little more firm with too. Yeah, and be firmer with too. You, you have a Yorkie and, you know, there's a whole thing about small dogs are hard to, hard to train. They're not in a lot of ways, but there is some tweaking. They're you have still to be dogs. More nuanced with them. Yeah. Because you can't be as physical with the small dog. Right. Because you can't bump them right. and have them go flying. But for your or, bigger or if you dog, do, it, it takes more firm. If you do bump them, I mean it takes a lot more finesse and True. and experience and things like that. It takes a professional dog trainer usually to teach you how yeah. to do it properly. Yes. Uh, one thing I'll add to is I like to have a training touch on. Oh, if yeah. A lot of people ask me, they go, so when do we train your dog, when do we not? And like, if the dog is out of the crate, <laughs> they're being be trained. trained. So leash, woo, <laughs> leash is always on, pouch is on your hip. If you don't have a pouch, you can't fly. Yeah. Do we have any questions we could answer? We only have one more on here. I don't think we had yeah, any. So there's we'll there's two answer, more. We never answered this one about the digs group. And there's no question oh, that comes Okay, in. so there's no questions on comments. What's TikTok. wrong with you guys? Looks like they're doing something. What is wrong with you guys? Nope. Okay, hey, hey, hey. So there's a, so is it the licky thing or is it, because this is digs revolve collapsible dog crate. And then this says the Diggs Groove ice thing. I assume we just stuck the, It's the, the training aid. Thing. It's the ice thing. The, it's like the one like the popsicle. So it's a training it's aid. It's basically like if you were to take a popsicle and you put it like you put liquid in it, you put the popsicle holder and you freeze it. Kids ate them when they were little kids. I don't even know. Kids still do that. But you basically take that thing, shove it through the crate, and then it clips to the side of a special crate. I think it's funny that it calls itself a training aid. Excuse me, but a training aid is when you use food or and water as leverage and you train. This is not a training aid. Oh, wait, wait. So this is, this is, wait, 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 I'm not against it. Hang on. I'm just <laughs> clarifying. It's just a definition of terms here, okay? A definition of terms. I've had a couple clients use them, and okay. they're not what they promise to be, but they can be somewhat valuable. So, licking is valuable for your dog. It is enrichment. Enrichment is not always training. If I want my dog to be enriched and go sniffing, that's enrichment because the dog is sniffing. I'm not involved in that. And that's not necessarily a good thing to, to do too much of. Okay, you can do a little bit of it, but y'all don't go crazy. So, enrichment is the new buzzword on Instagram. Y'all know enrichment builds arousal, okay? Even the licking. So, the licking is the, I would say, least arousal-based enrichment. And it does mentally work the dog in a way that we like better than puzzle toys, which is literally destructive, which we're not against. It's just when and how it's used. Like snuffle mats. So, like snuffle mats, yeah. Or, or Kongs with uh, wet food, you know, to lick out and takes a while slowly. So we are not against these. Use them whenever you want, but just don't, it's not the training. There's a special way to use them, in my opinion. You can tell supervised. me Supervised. Still that. supervised. Supervised. Uh, so the yes. way... Yes. Well, what, what if they chew a chunk of it off? Oh, uh, it's like, really, really hard to chew a chunk of it off. I disagree. 
Uh, if it's not, Actually, if that's it's, not the one I've, I've seen before. If it's not a black Kong, then I always worry because Dakota can rip those red Kongs. So apart. this one's different from the ones I've seen before. The ones that I've seen is literally the only thing inside is the chunk of ice. Yeah, look, no, look. No, so these aren't the ones that I'm used to. Digs this would be an entire thick piece of just a chunk of ice. And the only way that I've used the ones that I'm thinking about is literally I have to put them low on the crate bars because you don't want your dog sitting up licking this thing. It no, doesn't that's settle. That's what in. this is. Groove training A. Um, it's not the one that I'm used to. Then. Okay. Anyway, anyway, just supervised. Anytime you're giving your dog anything, it needs to be supervised. And the and whole point of licking it is if they have a calm, they're mental. laying down mental. licking it. Okay. Um, oh, I did have a question. Can yay! Answer? I want to answer. Sure. Just join. Can I ask how to stop my pup from biting? I try to give her toys and nothing is working. My arms, hands, and feet look like I'm doing drugs. She is 11 weeks. Okay, so uh, 11 weeks old, then you're not gonna use a leash to stop her too much, but you could use a harness and, uh, and a leash on your dog. That's gonna be super important. Um, is it, I mean, we just answered this. I know you just got on, but we literally just answered this. It'll be this. in the replay tomorrow. The, yeah, so, it'll be in the replay, check it out. And, and the replay, you can hop on YouTube to see the full replay, because the full one's not on here anymore, right? Right. Because of all the Instagram changes for converting videos to reels. So it's 15 minutes. So uh, it's gonna be on YouTube tomorrow. And we actually go over two ways to stop nipping and biting. One is with an older uh, uh, adolescent dog, but you could still do it on a harness and leash rather than a slip leash. And then the other one is we really, we just went over food work, like how to help with biting by just changing up your food work. So hopefully you'll check that out tomorrow. And again, uh, the full link will be on our YouTube. Everybody check out our YouTube videos. They're awesome. Okay. We got one more. Uh, okay, real quick, cause we were late. So we'll go over <clears throat> question about crate training. Do I put my puppy in the crate even if I'm home? Yes. Absolutely. Should I hide so they think I'm gone? If you can. No. <laughs> no, you're not gonna go hide. Put the crate in the bedroom. Just put it farther away. Put the crate in the least frequented room in your. You can go hide on top of a refrigerator. No, you you're go taking hide. it to extremes. I don't think she meant hide in the bathroom for two hours. Well, what if the crate's in the living room? She's gonna what? Go leave her living room for two hours? No. Put the crate in the least frequented room. It could be a laundry room, it could be a bedroom, it could be a guest bedroom. And anytime they're in the crate, don't go in the room or try your best to stay away from them. Yeah, you're, you're teaching a dog to be by themselves and a dog needs to be sleeping for 18 to 20 hours a day. So when they're in the living room and they're in the crate, their eyes are wide open watching you. Even if they look like they're asleep in that crate and you walk out of the room, they're watching you. They're not actually settling. So the reason we put them in a separate area is so they can learn how to rest, relax, and hit REM sleep without you being there. Okay, right, have, you ever, have you ever, have you ever had a baby? All right, so why I said, I'm about to explain for you too. Good, I love babies. Yeah, I know. So what I would like you to do is, uh, for anybody who ever had a kid, when you said, should I hide? And I said, yes, I was gonna explain myself in this way. When you have a baby sleeping, you are like, everybody, shh, shh, and you don't slam doors. If you go to the bathroom, you like close it like that. Because if you're struggling, and this is the other part, if you're struggling with whining with your puppy at all, you do want to be quieter. They must have their crate training, um, even if you're home. It's so important that because it's a system. Just like when you have a baby and you have, or a kid and they're on a schedule, dogs and puppies need a schedule. So you don't change up your schedule just because you're home. Now maybe if you're gone for an eight hour day and they get a visit midday from someone, maybe your crate is three hours instead of four. I mean, that's okay. But you want the same or similar schedule starting out. So let's say that the puppy's really struggling with being woken up. Treat it like as if you had a baby sleeping. The room is dark, the crate is covered. There are two forms of noise. One is a white noise machine, get the loudest you can, I forget the loudest version I know of, but you get the loudest you can for a fan, fan or a humidifier noise, white noise, and then uh, do some sort of people sounds, like a radio, or if you got Netflix, you could play a sitcom over and over again, because all that kind of, that back and forth is really good for the, the dogs to hear. You yeah. get like a four hour yeah. video on YouTube. 
me too. Exactly. And then that helps drown out outside noises so you don't have to be quite so crazy. And then just make sure you're not slamming doors. And if you have to leave, you know, to go do gardening, you know, close the door quietly, things like that. Um, if you need to blend or something like that, just be aware that might wake up your puppy. Okay, so just be aware of these things, which is kind of like hiding. Don't laugh. And stop it. I have done, I have, I have hidden plenty of times trying to work a dog through separate, a puppy through separation anxiety when I'm home. Because if they know I'm there, they're not going to, it's not going to be real life like when I go to work. So uh, how do you answer that? It is hiding. hiding. I am tiptoeing around. It is hiding. Anyway, what he said is correct. You know, a crate in the living room is fine for part of the day, but you want to make sure they're in a quiet room, laundry room, spare bedroom, your bedroom if you're not in there during the day as well. And sorry about the arguing, but he's being ornery. I don't this know why. This isn't arguing. This is debating. It's, okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, see you next week.